All right, let's finish off our description of distributions with the topic of distribution transforms. This will be pretty quick. In the next sections, we'll get into heterogeneity and then hypothesis testing. So distribution transformations. Why would you want to transform a distribution to another distribution? First, first reason would be that the variable that you've sampled has an expected shape that the distribution, there's some theoretical reason or some other information that tells us that the distribution should have a specific shape or form. And so, in fact, we're correcting the data that was probably coming from too few samples to see that shape in that form. It's kind of noisy, and we're fixing it to honor that distribution shape. That could be one reason. The other thing is that you may be using numerical methods or workflows that require a specific distribution shape in order to use them. A perfect example would be the geostatistical method of sequential Gaussian simulation requires that the variable is Gaussian distributed in order to um, perform the sequential simulation method. And so we transform to Gaussian we complete this sequential simulation uh, workflow, and then afterwards we back transform from Gaussian distribution back to the original variable distribution. So there's a variety of different reasons we might want to do a distribution transform. How do we do a distribution transform? Well, it's not too bad. We just have to apply the following operation to all of the sample data. The operation is the forward of the CDF, the f of x of x, where x will be the random variable representing all of our values within our sample data set. And then we have the take that. So when we apply that, this is this step right here. We're taking the original data units. We're going up to the CDF, the f of x of x. We go across, and we have a specific cumulative probability. So this operation results in a cumulative probability. Then we take the inverse of the target distribution, the GY inverse, and we have that cumulative probability here. And so we come across to the target CDF and we get the associated value from the new CDF with that specific cumulative probability. And that's our Y value right here. So we're going from X, the F of X of X to get the cumulative probability taking the cumulative probability applied in the reverse of the CDF or the inverse of the CDF of the GY target distribution. And we come down and we have the associated Y value, which is the translation or transform of X in the original distribution FX to Y from in the target distribution GY. Okay. So this type of approach of distribution transforms could be applied to any parametric or non-parametric distribution. You don't, we could, in fact, both of these distributions, this one here is non-parametric. It's from raw data. You can see the histogram here. And it's transformed into a parametric Gaussian distribution of mean of zero and standard deviation of one, which would be known as standard normal. And so that's parametric. And so we've gone from a non-parametric to a parametric distribution. Of course, a distribution transform could be from a non-parametric to a non-parametric, from a parametric to a non-parametric, and so forth. Anything could happen. We just need to be able to map from one distribution into the other. So what could be a problem? Well, if you're trying to work non-parametrically and you have too few data, you don't really have good control or resolution on one of these CDFs. It's pretty hard to perform this operation. You may want to fit it first with a parametric distribution so that you can perform this operation. You need to have the um, CDF defined in order to move back and forth. All right. So let's take an example right here. This is the most simple example you could ever imagine for a distribution transform, and you're about to see why. We could actually do it without even doing any real calculations or graphing. It's that simple. Because you remember, the, in order to do the distribution transform, we're performing a mapping. We're effectively mapping a value with a cumulative probability to the same cumulative probability on the other distribution. We're matching cumulative probabilities. Okay, so if we go here, 
we have two data sets. So we're working non-parametrically. And this is a pretty typical problem. We have well log porosity with the values 10, 13, 14, 15, 17 percent. We have core porosity 9, 6, 10, 13, 17. The core porosity will be more reliable. It um, is measured directly. Well log porosity is measured indirectly using some type of a tool that's detecting density or so forth within the subsurface. So, so the core porosity is the most ground truth. It's the most um, lowest error. And so we might look at it and say, we think the relative values of well log porosity are correct, but we doubt the units. We think that there might be a bias with the well log. We want to fix it by matching the core porosity distribution. And so if we want to perform this transform of transforming these well log porosity values to this core porosity values, how could we do it when we have these two non-parametric distributions? Well, we're going to need to do this operation right here. And we could specify it like this. We have F, which is the well log CDF with the well log associated values. We put it through in the forward. We get the cumulative probability. And then we use that in the inverse of the core CDF to get the associated core values. Now we need the CDF of both to do this. So it's not actually, for this case, it would be very straightforward because to get the CDF, what do we need to do? We need to take the data set and order it in ascending order. So I've done that for both of the data sets and actually they were already ordered for us. And so we got the values here for logs, we got the values here for core. We have to assign the cumulative probability. I use the I or index divided by N approach, which assumes you don't know the lower tail and you know the upper tail. You notice that the cumulative probability for the last value in each data set is equal to 100%. You of course could use the method of I divided by N plus one, which would be the approach where you don't know either tails, that might be better. Doesn't matter which approach you use, but if they're both consistent, these paired data values will have the same cumulative probabilities just by virtue of the fact that the data sets were the same. If we plot it, we get the cumulative probability, or the, sorry, the CDF, the cumulative distribution function for log porosity and for core porosity like this. The points are shown, the lines are just shown for, you know, clarity. I have not suggested um, that this is the model for the CDF, although of course you could do a piecewise linear model that might be one way to do it, but we're only concerned with the data locations on this plot. So let's transform the first one to uh, first log porosity to core porosity. And so the first value is 10. If you look at it, it has a cumulative probability of 20%, which is exa exactly the same cumulative probability as the first core value. So we literally transform from 10% to 6%. And so you'll see this is quite trivial. We just go straight across, the data points match up in cumulative probabilities, and so we're just mapping across. If you have the same number of data, and you sort the data, the data could be just mapped directly from one to the other, the cumulative probabilities would be the same. Of course, if you have different number of data and so forth, and you're working with a non-parametric, and you're just fitting, a, you're just building a CDF directly from the data, you could assume some type of linear um, interpolation between each one of them or some type of model between the data points in order to make interpolations at any points to be able to map across. If it's if this was parametric of course then you have a continuous representation and analytical solution for the CDF for all possible cumulative probabilities and you just have to punch that into your equation once you have built an order set of data with cumulative probabilities assigned. So this very simple example trivial, but it does demonstrate the idea of mapping by cumulative probabilities to move from one distribution to another. And so I think it's useful for that. Okay, so let's think about something just a little bit more complicated. And that is, imagine that you have a set of data, which are shown right here. I've already sorted them in ascending order. And so we have 10 samples available to us, and we want to transform it to a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. 
That would be the standard normal distribution. And so we want to do that. The first thing we have to do is we have to assign cumulative probabilities. So now what we do is we can assign cumulative probabilities, which are shown right here. In fact, these cumulative probabilities are based on the index divided by n plus 1. By doing that, the upper tail is not known. We don't get to 100% with the last data value. We're saying we never sampled the maximum, and that's fair. What's our chance of sampling the maximum when we sample often one trillionth of the subsurface? And we haven't, sub we haven't sampled the minimum value either. We have a cumulative probability of 9% for the lowest value. Fair enough. So we've decided that. Now we have to map those values based on those cumulative probabilities into the standard normal distribution. And so if we perform that operation, I can show it to you graphically. I took my data set of my log porosity values with their cumulative probabilities assigned with the i divided by n plus 1 method. You notice we don't go to 100% to 0% or to 100%. We don't know the tails. And we can plot them up like this. So this is our CDF. That's a valid CDF. It's um, monotonically increasing. It um, doesn't go below or above 0. It doesn't go below 0. It doesn't go above 1. So it, it looks like it's valid and it makes sense. We just calculated it. We sorted the data right. And now what we can do is we can take every one of those individual data values, take the cumulative probabilities that we assigned, take those cumulative probabilities and look up based on the inverse of the standard normal distribution, which is available. You could use in Excel the norm inverse function with the cumulative probability. We know the target distribution is standard normal, so mean of zero and a variance equal to standard deviation equal to one. And so we can take that score, cumulative probability of 0.18, and if we look that up with the Gaussian inverse for the standard normal distribution, we'll find out that we get a value of negative 0.92. And you could repeat that exercise for every one of these data, and that would be transforming our data, our 10 data, into the standard normal distribution. We could look at those data afterwards. We could calculate their mean, and in fact, the mean should be probably pretty close to zero, if not zero. We should find that the standard deviation is also very close to, should be very close to one. Variance should be very close to one. And so, and the shape, the, the points would actually lie on this line. And so we would be representing 10 data points that fall nicely onto this cumulative distribution function for the standard normal distribution. And so if we perform that for all of our data values, we now have transformed our original core porosities through their cumulative probabilities into a what I would denote as a normal score transform and bracket of the core porosities, and the values are here. Note, we now have negative porosity. It's a normal score porosity. It's got a mean of zero. It's got symmetric of uh, around zero, so we'd expect to see negative and positive, positive values. And you can see we've got negative 1.34, and we've also got positive 1.34. And so now we've, we've completed and transformed all our data to standard normal. And that would mean it would be ready for a Gaussian simulation, or maybe we're doing some type of statistical analysis that requires a Gaussian assumption, and we would be ready to do that with our data set. At the very end, we might find that we need to back transform and we could use we could take these two distributions and do the reverse operation to back transform to the original units if we'd like to so you go ahead and try transform these following values of b shale which is the fraction of shale into a normal distribution gaussian distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 4 I will show you the solution in three, two, one. So if you do that, same thing as we did before, now you've got seven data. You order the data in ascending order. Ah, I made it easy. I gave you the data in ascending order, so you just put it in the same order. You assign the cumulative probability. Once again, we use the I divided by N plus one approach. We say we don't know the tails, that's fair. Now, all we have to do is apply 
the norm inverse function from Excel, or we could work in R, Python, any, any type of um, language that has a package or has methods available with the Gaussian distribution with the inverse, and we can go ahead and calculate this. And so we'll find, if we look at the values here, that they're centered on 10. The Gaussian distribution is symmetric, so the P50 is equal to the mean, um, equal to the mode. In fact, it's got a one peak there in the middle. And so we would expect that the P50 is equal to the average value to the mean, and that's fine, and that's, we got 10. We would expect the, the standard deviation to be uh, 4, and so whereas before we were going with the standard normal of a standard deviation of 1, we were going from 0 to 1.5, we can see that we're in fact going up and down by 4.3, so we really are, it's about the same order of magnitude, the values make sense, it doesn't, we could check it, we could check the standard deviation and so forth, but it makes sense relative to the standard deviation. And so we have now transformed. Now, it doesn't hurt graphically to look at it. And so the original V-shell units, I purposely put them to have about the same magnitude as the transform. So we can plot it like this on one plot. The original CDF of our data is shown here. It's irregular. It changes. It's clearly got some type of a positive skew. You can see a bit of a tail right here. And then the Gaussian distribution is shown right here. And so we have transformed each one of those data points. They've been shifted to the new distributions. I mean, sorry, they've been shifted to the new values, sorry, that are now Gaussian with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 4. And when you plot the CDF, you can see, in fact, it is a very nice, smooth form. If you had more data values, you'd see it had nice S-curve type shape. It, in fact, is a Gaussian, distribu Gauss Gaussian distribution. So we've now completed this operation of transforming our data to a Gaussian distribution. Now we could work with any distribution. That distribution could have, um, as long as we have an inverse, we could do it very readily using the cumulative probabilities to work across, or it could be non-parametric, in which case we could use a lookup table and some form of piecewise linear regression to interpolate between the CDF data points, the data points on the CDF. So, that is the end of the discussion about distribution transforms. And with that, we have finished this um, set of lectures, really kind of a whole topic on univariate distributions, parametric distributions, non-parametric Monte Carlo simulation distribution transforms. And in our next section, we'll get into heterogeneity measures. So if you um, have any questions or comments, I'm always happy to discuss. I'm super easy to find. Thank you very much for your interest in this topic.